Thank you for tuning in to segment from the Slump Buster podcast. If you are picking the Saints to defend the Superdome, go ahead and leave a like on this video. And if you'll be feeling the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week, make sure to drop a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. The Saints are five and a half point underdogs in the Superdome. Ever think you would say that? I mean, certainly with all those years of success with Drew Brees and Sean Payton, five point underdogs in their own home stadium. It doesn't sound right. And I think part of that is because there's a lot of question on what Jameis Winston is this year, whether he's a good quarterback, whether he's a bad quarterback. What I will tell you is he's a quarterback that hasn't had a lot of opportunity. He is currently 29th in pass attempts on the year. That is less pass attempts than Jacoby Brissett, who only started, I believe, just the two games there. Jameis Winston has a lot to prove in this game, certainly going against his old team as well. This is the Jameis Winston revenge game. We actually finally get it. Jameis Winston lining up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I kind of wonder in that Monday night game, so the Bucs are also on short rest as they played Monday night. Did they get caught up looking forward to this matchup? And they didn't pay much attention to the Seahawks. They also had a play in the rain, but did they perhaps look ahead and said, ah, the Seahawks team without Russell Wilson, we can easily breeze by, by them. We have to worry about the Bucs next week. That kind of makes me wonder. And that's why... Here is my Cajones pick of the week. I will go with the Saints to upset the Buccaneers in their home stadium, in the Superdome. And I, I think the reason I'm, I'm going with this in particular is I, I said, I think that the Bucs will split the series with the Saints either way. You have to remember the Saints did sweep this regular season series against the Bucs just last year. The Saints do have a good defense still. They have a really good defense. They have a top five NFL defense, I would say. And Tom Brady's going into this, you know, Antonio Brown, he's already looking like he's going to be ruled out, um, which that takes away one weapon for him. Antonio Brown, I think, was pivotal in the playoff game, whereas they didn't really have Brown or Brown was getting eased in the offense whenever they ever faced the Saints in the regular season. So it's a very similar matchup aside from where do you compare Jameis Winston to Drew Brees last year? And I think most of us would consider Jameis Winston in terms of ability is still an upgrade over Drew Brees last year with the broken ribs and everything. Michael Thomas still being out, that's again a thing that hurts this team maybe by next week. But in terms of just week eight, Halloween night, Saints, Bucks, I'm going with the Saints. I mean, I'm I'm dressed as a pirate, so I gotta I gotta pick the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here, of course. You gotta sing a pirate's life for me, man. Yo, ho, yo, ho, yo, ho, ho, a pirate's, pirate's life, life for me. me. Yes. Da, 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 let us da, 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 da. let us wave the souvenir Buccaneers flag here on the podcast. Yeah, I, I will roll with Tampa here because they are big, and uh, I guess I might be the Baja Cojones of the week. I have uh, not made the the bold proclamations. I guess the Steelers were technically underdogs, but I uh, I've not made the bold proclamations this week in favor of picking the the massive underdogs the way that you have. I'm the person who t- takes the chalk when you pick the massive underdogs. It you gotta go repeat. pragmatic with it again. Just. Call it a freebie, Kyle. Come on, do it for me. Come on, give me, give me a bit. Say that's a freebie. Just saying. Okay. You know what? This one feels like a freebie. This one feels a little bit like a freebie because if there it is. if you're the Saints, I know you beat the Seahawks on Monday, and and you you're doing just enough to get by because now we know the Panthers are terrible. We knew the Falcons were terrible coming into the season, so you're doing just enough to stay alive. But coming out of that game, like you can't be feeling good if you're the Saints, right? Like I know the offense kind of just became, let's give the ball to Alvin Kamara. Let's dominate time of possession. We don't need to score points because the Seahawks are totally incapable of scoring points. But you can't be feeling great coming out of that game if you're a Saints fan. Like Jameis Winston has been basically like Jared Goff this year where he's not, I mean, Jared Goff has made some like Jameis Winston type of plays where he's like throwing the ball out of bounds on fourth down. And Jameis has had less of those than we're used to, but they're basically just game managing Jameis at this point. And that feels kind of weird because the Saints offense had, it was always such a high powered offense and maybe like getting Michael Thomas back will change it a bit. Or yeah. maybe this is the week they open it up because the Buccaneers, and this is true, have no corners and no safeties at all. They are signing schmucks off the street the same way the University of Arizona held open tryouts at this point. They tried to bring in Richard Sherman. He couldn't stay healthy. They got like nobody left on that team at this point. So maybe this is the week to open up the offense and let Jameis throw those deep balls at this point. I can't believe I'm saying this, but they really miss Taysom Hill. 
Like they really miss Taysom Hill at this point, uh, whether the Taysom Hill package gets you in at the goal line or whether they use him as a, a pseudo tight end. Like they, they are really missing him at this point. Saints offense is just not that good. Like I know, I know it's better than what we saw the, the putrid Drew Brees trying to play through basically a car crashes worth of injuries last year, but it's just so boring. It's like Sean Payton's trying to hide the quarterback the whole way through. And this was finally the game where they used Alvin Kamara effectively, but you're not going to be able to do that against the Bucs because the Bucs have just an amazing run defense and an awful pass defense, which means you're going to need Jameis the same way everyone's been playing the Bucs this year, except the Chicago Bears, because the Chicago Bears offense is abjectly terrible, maybe the worst in the NFL. But everyone except the Chicago Bears is basically like, we're going to use pass like the run. We're going to throw screen passes. We're going to throw little two yard outs uh, on first down to try and gain yards the same way someone might do a power running play with another quarterback or another running back or whatever it might be. We're going to use short passes and we're going to spread the field because the Buccaneers don't have any help in the secondary. So do you trust Jameis Winston throwing the ball 45 times a game? Do you trust Jameis Winston to complete 70% of his passes in a game? Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it gives me pause for concern because the blueprint to beat Tampa Bay is pretty obvious. You just spread the field, use the pass like the run, you can generate enough points and then maybe stop Tom Brady enough times. No one really knows how to stop their offense except for some reason the Dallas Cowboys until the very end of that game. But yeah. And I guess, you know, the Patriots did slow them down as well, but I feel like that one was just Tom Brady having a terrible game. Like if Tom Brady's playing like a the quarterback we know Tom Brady to be, which is pretty damn good doesn't have to be MVP Tom Brady just has to be like good enough Tom Brady there's not a lot of ways to stop that offense because they can beat you so many different ways but at least with the scoring points against the Bucs it's pretty obvious how you get 24 points no matter what schmucks you're putting out there at wide receiver if you're the Saints so maybe that's the plan maybe they'll let uh, Jameis throw the ball all over the field this week I just don't know how they're going to win the game other than their defense like forcing three turnovers against Tom Brady or getting a pick six or something like that like one of those weird games like what happened against the uh, the Packers to start the season maybe that happens and you get to be abjectly right but uh, I'm gonna roll with Tampa for now and uh I know, I know. I just wanted to to do the wrestling character promo and say that this is a uh, this is a gimme type of game, but yeah. this, there is a path to victory for the Saints because the Bucks can be beaten by anyone at this point if they just score enough points. I could see the pathway for the Saints in this game. That that's the main thing. I, I just see the pathway. You mentioned the bad cornerback play for the Buccaneers. I think that that's definitely where they have the opportunity to come and play. I think this is a good Sean Payton game. I think this is where Sean Payton really starts to open it up because he knows that he's going to have to have his best game plan of the season to win this game. And this is a very important game because as we stand here currently, the Bucks are six and one, the saints are still just four and two, whether they got four and two by hook or by crook, they are four and two in the playoff picture. And I, I think that they still had the personnel to win a Super Bowl. I, I still believe that they, when you look at that roster, you look at the talent they have on there, they still have the personnel to win a Super Bowl. Not saying they will, but they can be in that category. So if you want to do that, you want to set yourself up in the best situation possible. And for the Saints, we know that situation is home field advantage. So huge weekend. I, I think that they come out, show out their best game plan and beat the Buccaneers. I've got a question for you real quick before yes. we move on. Who is the worst quarterback you could put on the Saints right now and win the Super Bowl? Who is the worst quarterback you could put on the Saints and win the Super Bowl? <laughs> I would say someone that's more like a game manager to keep it safe. And, you know, this might be a dig at myself and my own team. I would say if you put like Jimmy Garoppolo or someone on this team, Ooh. they could win a Super Bowl. See, I think I need a little bit more. I think, I think mine would be Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen would be mine. Maybe Stafford. Maybe oh. Stafford could win a Super Bowl, but See, here's the thing. I think you just need a guy that could play within the offense. That's my thing. Like, you know, you look at what Drew Brees did for many years. If you just give me a guy that's smart and can play within the offense and use these playmakers we have on the field, even though there's questions as far as how good is Traquan Smith, Marquez Callaway, these wide receivers they currently have on their team, you still have some playmakers there. You're going to get Michael Thomas back. You have Alvin Kamara. You have one of the best offensive lines in football. 
give me even a Jared Goff. I could even say I could potentially oh. make a Super Bowl just because Jared Goff is going to do what I tell him to do if I'm Sean Payton, similar to what Jared Goff did, what Sean McVay told him to do until he did it. I, I think that's where the Saints are having the issues they're having is that Sean Payton wants to almost restrict Jameis Winston to not make those Jameis Winston type errors. And that's why their offense seems like it's almost fighting against itself. I, I think if you just give me a guy that is just upstairs here in the brain, uh, able to do what I want him to do, I could win a Super Bowl with that guy. I think that's how Sean Payton thinks. And I think if you look at what they have defensively as well, because this is a defense led team, this is not an offensive led team. Like we traditionally think of what the saints as mm -hmm. they can be a Super Bowl contender in that respect. So you've talked have, me down a little bit. I think the lowest I will go is Tannehill. I think Tannehill's the best I can go. If if Tannehill is their quarterback, maybe they can win a Super Bowl. Maybe. That's the lowest I will go on that one.